Oh, like even that one, like even that one, just got a little, got a little bounce to it, you know. Yeah. All right, the USA, USA is turning 250 years old in 2026, and the Queen City is celebrating with its own look back in history. I'm kind of excited about this. It's in honor of that big milestone. The city will be celebrating sort of a popular event. It's a throwback, if you will. America's River Roots will bring music, food. And lots of big old boats back to the riverfront. Kind of like the Tall Stacks Festival. You know Tall Stacks. You love Tall Stacks. It was last held back in 2006. This is video from some of the Tall Stacks festivals over the years. Event organizers hope to catch some of that same spirit that brought hundreds of thousands of people to the Tri-State. It'll also kick off the celebration of America's 250th birthday the following year. So they'll do this in 2025, the birthday's 2026. The event will showcase the Ohio River and its vital role in our nation's history. I can remember what a huge, huge deal Tall Stacks was when it came. We look at this River Roots experience as a great way to lead into the nation's 250th anniversary late in 2025. It's a great springboard to all the activities and excitement that we anticipate in the year 2026. I was so excited, I almost talked right over that gentleman's soundbite. Uh, there will be 12 riverboats taking part. There are three locations. Look at this. There's going to be a few boats from, from Louisville. The, the Colonel Queen. coming from Galveston, Texas, which Charles Barkley will be excited about. Uh, it's making the longest trip. It will run from October 9th <laughs> through the 12th of next year. If you don't get that Charles Barkley reference, just trust me. He, I, I, it just, yeah. Mm, mm, him talking about playoffs and teams going to the beach. I don't And if they didn't know. good, he sent them to Galveston. Oh, anyway, um, but as, as I was Look saying before, I, I can remember when a, when a tall stacks festival would hit town. It was such a monumental thing, the buildup, the amount of volunteers they had to get downtown to help with it. Now, were you, you were what, probably five or so years in town at that point? No, I guess longer than no, that. No, I, I was More 10, like 10 years. 10 years in I was town. 10 yeah. years in town uh, at that time, and I don't, rem I don't, re I didn't go down to it, but I remember the hype around it. But what, what is crazy to me is I, I can't believe it's been that long ago that the since last they, festival was. Since they did it, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the number of people that have asked when is it coming back? When, when are they doing another Tall Stacks? Why haven't they done another Tall Stacks? And it's not, this isn't technically Tall Stacks, uh, but it's certainly going to feel that way yeah. and look that way. It's so, going to be really neat. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Very cool. Well, some new art is coming to the Kentucky side of the river. Two new murals are almost complete in Newport. Covington development and investment firm Corporex teamed up with the nonprofit Artworks. The murals are at Ovation. That's the mixed-use development that includes a music venue, office space, and restaurants. I Excited. love. I love all the murals. All of the murals around town. Now both sides of the river. And we what were we just celebrated in USA today for like best street art city yes. in the whole. There was Dagum that. There country was best like Riverwalk. There was just all, all kinds of, of it. awards. We're just the best. Yeah. Just ask anyone, especially USA <laughs> Today. I think it proves that people in Cincinnati will absolutely vote for Cincinnati. Yeah, absolutely. Because all those things are like, you know, go and vote kind of things. But we deserve it. You, you, the you area deserves it. You can't outclick us. And what's, you can't. What's fun is walking around and seeing the murals like during Blink. Oh. And how they highlight them there. And, and it's we'll just, get we'll get new ones yeah. at Blink this fall. It's it's pretty. And awesome. so many talented artists. Absolutely. Around the area too. Well, yesterday on Arc Cincinnati, we talked a little bit about the nominee for the Tony Awards, but today we want to look at some of the people with connections to the Tri-State Up for Awards. Always a connection yeah. or two, right? The College Conservatory of Music at the University of Cincinnati is known around the world for launching careers on Broadway, and this year, four alumni are up for awards. Dorian Harewood is up for Best Lead Actor in a Musical. Wow. He is a Dayton, Ohio native and plays Noah in that show. That's amazing. Broadway superstar. So Shauna Bean is receiving her second Tony uh, nomination, this time for her role in Hell's Kitchen. The show was written by Alicia Keys and loosely tells the story of growing up in New York City. I had no idea that Alicia Keys had a show on Broadway. I didn't either until Golly. now. Golly. Actress Leslie Kritzer is nominated in the Best Feature Actress category. We've got her picture right there. Uh, now, this, receiving this nomination, she is for her portrayal of The Lady in the Lake in the revival of a fantastically oh, funny show, Spamalot. Yes. And behind the scenes, Isabella Bird is nominated in two lighting design categories. Oh, cool. She worked on a show called An Enemy of the People and designed the lighting for Cabaret at the Kit Kat Club. Yeah, it's 
it's amazing how well renowned what the the work is that they do yeah. over you see at getting people ready to take those steps onto Broadway and the sheer number of people that get they get nominations and get recognized. It's just so so just cool, and so special. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, yeah, everyone. More congratulations though. A local distillery also has something to celebrate. New Riff Distilling won 10 medals at this year's San Francisco World Spirits competition. It earned one double gold six gold and three silver medals. The double gold went to New Riff's six-year-old malted rye oh, whiskey and boy. Wenzel whiskey also won big in the same competition. The, the Covington Distillery took home a gold medal for its barrel-proof weeded bourbon along with two silver medals for its rye whiskey and 150th anniversary release that was crafted in partnership with local mixologist molly wellman the distillery sent us this photo and that's uh where sheila and tanner our producer and i went and did we did some of the blending you had the, the, you had the pipettes we you did. were like you were like hidden you know like a chemistry class we learned all about how to make the the different yeah. blends and it's yeah. a lot of science tanner just reports that nobody liked his is that true you can tell that's us that's not true tanner it tanner. just I was, see, I was, he says okay. I was the only one that liked it. Jen was the one. But let's be but honest. Jen is, Jen is a kind soul. Tanner, how, how much proof was it? It was like 150 proof. So after a while, I liked it all. <laughs> right? it, didn't, it didn't matter what yeah. it was. It was, it was, it was yeah. going down smooth. the tiniest, tiniest but, yeah. little, little sips. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did we pretty much spend the entirety of that block talking about just how great this area is? Yes. That's right, we we'll did. We'll do it again. Are we sucking up to get more viewers? You betcha. You're pretty great. <laughs> Tell your friends, Star 64, and then instruct them on how to find it. That's right, because it can be difficult. <laughs> sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest, you want to see more. So click some of those links, or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.